Hello and welcome to the Campbell River Art Gallery. I'm glad to welcome you here today for a virtual tour. My name is Janelle Poseshnik and I am the Curator of Contemporary Art. Today we're talking about the exhibition Humor as Medicine and we're going to start with this very interesting sculpture that is standing outside of our main gallery space. So I'll direct your eyes toward this large piece here that is situated in our lobby. As you can see, Yalmer Wenstab is utilizing the traditional form of the totem, but has changed it in some particularly interesting ways. The name of this particular artwork is Raven Brings Power to the World and Trudeau Sells It. So this is a great example of Yalmer utilizing a traditional indigenous form in order to talk about contemporary political issues. I'll get you to follow me into the exhibition and we'll see some more artwork. Now this exhibition references the resilience, the ability of Indigenous communities to use humour to talk about difficult histories. These artists bring up a lot of difficult things within this exhibition, but do so with a range of humors, anything from black humor, dark humor, satire, all the way to parody. So you'll notice that as we go around, the artists are utilizing humor as a way to open these difficult subjects and to welcome us in, creating a safe space for us to have some conversations. So if you follow me into this exhibition space here, you're going to see another totemic form that is Yelmer Wenstab's work. Now this work is called for the Year of Reconciliation. As you can see, he is utilizing the form of the oil barrel. Now, just looking at these, they're rusted. They, they feel, it feels like they're oozing this kind of black tar that we find to be such a an important commodity at this moment in time that often extracting oil from the land becomes more important than preserving the land on, uh, from which it comes. So Yalmer is making a commentary about the high value of oil in comparison to you know, conservation of land, um, protection of animal species, um, acknowledgement of indigenous communities' rights uh, and sovereignty over their traditional territories, and the value of personal wealth over the collective. And as you walk around the back side of the totem, you can see that it continues to be um, reflective of the traditional form with a carving that is made into the actual metal and illuminated from the inside. So it is reflecting an animal form onto the wall behind itself which is a kind of reverse of the way we're used to looking at a totem, which is facing the carving head on. Now, I've had a few people comment that this could be an owl. So I'll let you think about what kind of animal you think it might be and what the symbolic value of that choice is. So what we have here in this photographic series is Sunny's commentary on the way that Indigenous art has been relegated into three specific zones. So you can see here that there is uh, these mask forms that Sunny places into each scene. And these are offcuts that he found from a building site um, on his territories here at the Wewakai Reserve. So the first image that you're looking at is indigenous artwork for touristic consumption. So you're looking at a, a kind of very commercial, um, easy to consume culture on shelves. So the second relegation is into the art gallery. And as you can see, we have utilitarian objects encased in glass. You have another set of utilitarian objects, these beautiful panels that are also kind of hung. So the idea of decommissioning 
artworks um, that would be ubiquitous within general life and turning them into this kind of display. Then we have the third um, area, and that is the kind of anthropological perspective. So again, you're looking at ceremonial masks and ritual pieces that are meant to be utilized. They're meant to be danced. They are considered to have a life form. And when they are not being used in ritual and ceremony, they're meant to go away and to rest. And so to have them in this way is contrary to the life force that they have and the way that they are meant to live. And it also serves to hold Indigenous culture and communities in a historical context and doesn't allow for this evolution of community and of people. And so it creates this mythology around um, Indigenous communities kind of remaining and being held in the past by the colonial gaze. So off the cuff, you see that this is a kind of funny, parodic image. She's playing around with the idea of the pinup girl and embodying that. But then if you look a little bit deeper, um, this location is on the edge of the South Saskatchewan River, just outside of Saskatoon. And this is the site of the famous Starlight Tours uh, that were predominantly, well, they started in the late 70s and went on well into the 90s and early 2000s. And this was a practice of uh, police taking Indigenous folks way out into these rural areas in the dead of winter and leaving them there to walk home um, in extremely cold conditions and often without proper clothing. And so as you can see, this is a very dangerous act to engage in. Um, and had led to the death of some people, uh, as well as just no real disciplinary action against those police officers. And so this immediate, the immediacy of the kind of funny, pit-up image is, has these darker underlying tones where she's revealing a kind of sinister story about uh, police racism. So now we're moving along to... Sunny Asu's famous work, The Breakfast Series. So this is a very fun and very witty series of cereal boxes that play off well-known uh, brands uh, that we all know and love. As you can see, there are uh, traditional food sources that are referenced. Two of the cereals reference salmon, which is life for Kwakwakiwak people. Uh, there's also Bannock Pops. Uh, and you can see there are also uh, political references here in Treaty Flakes and Lucky Beats. And each box is worth a close look. Treaty Flakes, for instance, um, is made of member nations Cape Budge, Campbell River, Quica, and Comox, with a total land mass of 14,000 hectares and a 100% government BS and does not contain a government referendum. The ingredients are sugar-coated lies, government bureaucracy, self-governance, land resources, broken promises, acknowledging the past and securing the future. We are extremely grateful to have had you join us today on this virtual tour, and we welcome you back into our gallery any point, whether that be physically or virtually. Thank you for joining us at Humor is Medicine.